Good evening, everyone. Welcome to uh, another event uh, organized by Peace Islands New York and our friends at the Turkish Cultural Center. Uh, this event is free and funded in part by a grant from the uh, NYC and Company Foundation. Let me start with a quote. Music should be so powerful such that one is powerlessly dragged to the unknown. It should invade the listener's mind to the point of losing awareness. Ahmed Wahab. So who is Ahmed Wahab? The New York Times calls him the ambassador for a silenced music. Honored as a peacemaker and virtuoso, Ahmed Alan Wahab is one of New York's most celebrated and distinguished uh, composer, vocalist of Sufi and folk music. He sings in many different languages with a unique mystical style. The virtuosos of Amir weave fiery instrumentals and songs of the ancient land of the Middle East that include Persian, Turkish, Azeri, and beyond. As an intr instrumentalist, he plays and teaches the tar, the setar, tambur, saz, ud, ney, daf, and zar. He began his musical studies at an early age and by his late teens, Amr Wahab was al already an accomplished musician and a music teacher. Amir studied in London from 1976 to 79 and went to University of Paris from 79 to 1981. After completing his degree in linguistics at the University of Paris, he moved to Switzerland to study, to study uh, or, uh, horology and jewellery design. In 1981, Amir Wahab moved to his current home city of New York. Here in New York, he established himself as a prof professional music musician, both in live shows and in recording studio studios. He has played before audiences ranging from select private shows to crowds of 6,000 people. In addition, he has composed eclectic music for theatre, film and performed for several television and radio stations in the United States. In his work, Ahmed Wahab tries first of all to illustrate the beauty of Iranian traditional music, which he believes is part of the global heritage and needs to be both taught and preserved. Secondly, he has also attempted to take new approaches to traditional works in order to attract the young generation of music enthusiasts, a venture which has proven most successful. Ahmed Wahab is currently teaching and lecturing private and group classes in universities, libraries, museum, museums and cultural centers on the one hand and organizes music therapy workshops on the other. The Ahmed Wahab Ensemble was formed by Amr Wahab in New York City in 1981 to perform both the mystical music of the Sufis and the folkloric music of different regions of Iran and Turkey. The aim of Amr Wahab Ensemble is to draw the listener's attention to the spiritual dimension of existence. The ensemble features Mr. Wahab together with a rotating group of over 40 people from musicians of diverse national and ethnic backgrounds uh, chosen depending on the focus of the performance. Please welcome Ahmed Wahab. I leave it, uh, Mr. Wahab, in your good hands. Thank you and, and welcome again to everybody. Have a pleasant evening. Thank you so much for your kind uh, introduction. Uh, well, we'll have the pleasure together with my friends, Gail to my left and Yvette to my right, uh, to um, have the next uh, hour and a half, um, the discussion of uh, Sufi music and also demonstration of some of the beautiful songs, mostly by Rumi, some of them are by Yunus Emre, and uh, occasionally other mystics. Um, and I will say a few words as we go along about the musical instruments, about the poets, and about the backbone of, uh, of Sufi music. So without further ado, let me ask Gail to uh, recite a poem to set the mode for, um, for this uh, evening. Um, main thing is to unite our hearts, um, regardless of the language, culture, um, mysticism is the, um, inner part of the uh, religions uh, and Sufism is the, the heart of Islam. So um, that is why, especially in the Abrahamic traditions, um, 
we are very close indeed. So let's listen to Gail recite. What if praise is one? So the praise is one too. Many jugs being poured into a huge basin. All religions, all this singing, one song. The differences are just illusion and vanity. Sunlight looks slightly different on this wall than it does on that wall, and a lot different on this other one, but it is still one light. We have borrowed these clothes, these time and space personalities from a light. And when we praise, we pour them back in. Thank you so much. We're going to start with Yunus. Thank you. 
Now that we have sing a song from Yunus, I'd like to ask Yvette to um, treat you to one of Yunus's poetry as well. So you also become familiar with Yunus's feeling, Yunus's lens through which he saw the world. And um, then we will say more about the song. Burning, burning, I drift and pray. Love studied my body with me. I am not in my senses, no man. Come, see what love has done to me. Now and then, like the wind, I blow. Now and then, like the waves, I go. Now and then, like the floods, I flow. Come, see what love has done to me. Hold my hand, lift me from this place, or take me into your embrace. You made me weep, make me rejoice. Come, see what love has done to me. Love lorn, I say, madly and scream. My loved one is mad only for me. I wait and plunge into his dream. Come, see what love is done. Thank you so much. Mr. Mohab? Yes. Sir, it's difficult to hear um, when the ladies perform the poems. So it, it would be, if it's possible, if they can get close to the microphone while they're performing, that would be great. Sure. Uh, actually, I should uh, explain that. Um, so the sound of drums, uh, the Zoom uh, company have actually put so much effort uh, to make sure that what is considered as noise does not get in the way. Um, and when we play drum, everything else, the vocals, the speaking, the oud, the instrument, the string gets through. As soon as the drums play, um, it kind of filters it because it con considers it as, uh, as unwanted noise. So there is no way that we could, uh, we could fix that it's, uh, if we're going through Zoom. But I'll ask them to, to play actually calmer quieter and you will see that uh, it, it, it will get through. Thank you for your note. Okay, so let's play that softer.
giderdi Mevlani'nin ismini çok zikrederdi Mevlani'nin ismini çok zikrederdi Allah Allah diyor derde göderdi Allah Allah This little bit this way, so not so close this way. No, the other way around. This way, yeah. Okay, so you can turn on. Okay, great. So, well, let's start with uh, first thing first. Um, you know, um, I was asked to say a few words about the um, this tradition of Sufism, and um, of course. This is what I'm used to since I'm 13 years old to talk about uh, this subject as it's one of my most favorite subjects. The word Sufi, oftentimes uh, people ask, you know, like, what is the root of this word? Where does it come from? The traditional explanation for the, the word root of the word Sufi because uh, there is a word in Arabic uh, that is suf, which means wool, and uh, correct, uh, correctly uh, assumed many of the early Sufis uh, that go back uh, to 1400 years ago. The Sufis, as I said, is the mystical part of Islam. And uh, these uh, Sufis, uh, started right at the very beginning. Those are the people who are more into inner part of the religion. Um, and um, therefore, um, one of the many things they did was wearing the cheapest, because the idea was not to attract attention, not to show off and to be modest. So they usually closed from the most reasonable material which was on those days and in those region, instead of imported silk from China, they would wear the local wool. So, and because the wool in Arabic is called suf, so, and Sufis wore woolen gowns, a lot of people thought that's where it comes from. And to some extent is true. We're not certainly denying that, however, since um, uh, tonight, one of the things we are doing is appreciation of uh, old mystics, but especially Rumi. Rumi uh, differs uh, from that. And uh, 
to me, it makes more sense what he says. Rumi says the word Sufi comes from the word Saf, not Suf, which is wool, but Saf, which means pure, cleansed, filtered. So Saf, uh, I know in Turkish language, the, um, it's became an expression. So they mean like naive. But, uh, but the Arab, in Arabic, it means, like I said, filtered, cleansed, purified. So since the backbone of the work of mystics in any uh, religion, especially Islam, but um, the rest of the Abrahamic uh, stream, is to purify ourselves, clean ourselves, filter ourselves, our thoughts, our deeds, what we say, et cetera, and uh, so on. Therefore, uh, so the Sufis oftentimes uh, believe that this, this, what Rumi's explanation makes more sense. But we don't make a decision. We leave that up to you to decide um, which makes more sense. So, so much for the word of Sufism. And so the songs uh, that Sufis sing uh, also uh, attracts your attention towards the source, that one source of creation, which is uh, nothing but, we say, God. Um, unfortunately, with the time, you know, people go through different phases. Sometimes it's not fashionable to use God. So we use other words. But remember, there's one source of creation for everything, especially everything that is on planet Earth. And we are all together uh, in it. So we should unite our hearts and, um, and uh, think of ourselves as one, one soul and one body. As we go on, I will say a few words about the instruments too, but um, so we will mix it so you don't get uh, uh, tired. Next song I will do, we turn again to Gail to maybe recite another beautiful poem for us. Um, it's with, uh, with another mystical uh, poet, his name is Niazi. And, uh, that's also very beautiful. That is why I have chosen that. Okay. I have learned so much from God that I can no longer call myself a Christian, a Hindu, a Muslim, a Buddhist, a Jew. The truth has shared so much of itself with me that I can no longer call myself a man, a woman, an angel, or even pure soul. Love has befriended Hafez so completely, it has turned to ash and freed me of every concept and image my mind has ever known. Thank you so much. <laughs> so that there is no uh, misunderstanding. The poet that was recited obviously was from Hafez, the, 13th, uh, the 14th century a Sufi mystic. Uh, when I said Niazi is the, the zikr or the, uh, uh, the, the ilahi that we are going to sing for you. So yes, make sure if you turn a little bit so that the drum, yes, stays a little bit further away from the microphone. Beautiful, exactly.
Let's do one more Ilahi.
this is a very beautiful, um, we call it Ilahi, means uh, a song that is written for God, for the beloved. Uh, another name for God amongst the Sufis, the beloved. Another name is Dust or Dost, which means the friend, the only true friend that we have. Uh, before we come to this world, we are with that entity. And after we leave, we are with that entity. To that entity, we return. And during our lifespan, regardless of how many years you live, as uh, Baba Taher says, uh, another mystical poet, from uh, uh, 1,500, 1,050 years ago, almost 1,100 years ago. So he says, even if you live 100 years, at the end, we all have to go. So um, this uh, beautiful um, ilahi, or I should say poetry of, of this uh, mystical song says, talks about uh, the dawn, in case you were wondering what you were singing. And uh, it says, Oldem de gül handan olur, gül gül görüp nalan olur. Her ehli dil şadan olur, feryad eder, vakti sahab. So vakti sahab means, uh, the moment of dawn, which as you know, for um, again, most religions, um, it's a very special time of prayers, especially for the uh, mystical uh, Sufis or Sufi mystics. Um, they get up uh, before the sunrise to meditate, to pray, uh, and when everybody else is sleeping, they are alone with the divine source and they unite their hearts with that source of creation. Remind themselves that where we come from, why we are in this world, what are we supposed to do while we are here? And where do we go um, once we are done in this earthly life? And goes on and on. It's uh, it's very beautiful. Another line says, uh, "At that moment of dawn, all the angels come and dance within the universe, and they say, who, who, who? It's actually uh, short for Hova in Arabic, which means him." again, refers to the um, essence of our creator God. So we simply say who, uh, and the reason they say that is because you should be so, I mean, a Sufi should be so filled with the heart of a Sufi, the chest of a Sufi, the thoughts of a Sufi, should be so filled with the, uh, memory and remembrance of the divine that it should be sufficient just to simply say him who else but god so uh, again the true monotheists remember abraham our great grandfather which we share with our christians and jews um brothers and sisters uh, taught us how to be a monotheist. So uh, whose turn it is to, to Yvette to, to read a poem? So why don't you pick a nice poem for us before we go to the next song? Um, go ahead. And then I'll explain about the song that I will sing after that. These are the seven vices of me. Seven vices of me. In generosity and helping others, 
be like a river. In compassion and grace, be like the sun. In consuming others' thoughts, be like the night. In anger and fury, be like one who is calm. In modesty and humility, be like the earth. In tolerance, be like the sea. Either exist as you are, or be as you are. Thank you so much. So, uh, as you heard earlier on, what are one of the passion that I had from the young age was to learn different languages. Uh, and um, this next Ilahi, which was originally uh, written in Afghan Persian, it was an Afghani song from Afghanistan, obviously. Uh, later on, because I guess it has a very beautiful catchy melody, they have added uh, so many different languages to it. So we're going to have uh, this, uh, this song. Uh, part of it is uh, English, part of it is Arabic, part of it is Persian, part of it is Urdu, part of it is Turkish. So one song in five different languages. Couldn't be better because it uh, portraits uh, our hearts. So actually, the, it, so you could play without the chain because when we do the chain, it also makes the microphone very sensitive. So just play the drum.
padişahı Allahu Allah yüreklerin fenahı Allahu Allah işit Allah derdimi bu ağlarını rahmeyle bağışla günahlarını öyle hem akşam hem sabahlarını So let's see, I think we will do one more and then we will take a break. We promised we're going to give you a break. <laughs> Some of you, it's good to um, get up and stretch uh, a little bit. They say it's not very good to sit more than 45 or 50 minutes. So um, we will do so. And this is our um, last song of uh, Yunos again, and then um, we'll take a break and come back.
Okay, welcome back and um, hope you had a, a nice break. So again, to set the theme, we are going to ask Gail to uh, treat us yet to another a poem, especially this is chosen because it relates to musical instrument, even though that is Hafez going back to 14th century 700 years ago, but you could see that the, the music was always an important uh, part of uh, meditation. Please. I wish I could speak like music. I wish I could put the swaying splendor of the fields into words so that you could hold truth against your body and dance. I am trying the best I can with this crude brush, the tongue, to cover you with light. I wish I could speak like divine music. I want to give you the sublime rhythms of this earth and the sky's limbs as they joyously spin and surrender, surrender against God's luminous breath. Hafez wants you to hold me against your precious body and dance, dance. Thank you so much. Speaking of dance, uh, this is uh, one of the, the dances that uh, Sufis do. Um, but remember, I insist this is only one of the many, many dances they do. Uh, oftentimes, the highest dance, in my humble opinion, is when you have no idea what you're doing. And uh, you are totally dissolved in the uh, ocean of divinity and love of God. And uh, rather than worrying about the angle of your hands and your, you know, the, the degree of rotation, etc. Uh, oftentimes, this is actually misunderstood. May I borrow that? Um, so this this uh, this practice of whirling is actually a very very sophisticated um, that thing that uh, that was developed through Rumi. Uh, he used to speak from his home, which later on turned to a mosque. And he had this pillar in the center of that tent where he used to put his hand on that pole, on that pillar, and just go round and round and talk. And his students, his friends, and his sons all uh, were saying that uh, Rumi never sat there and wrote poetry like we write here in the West, we say writing poetry. Uh, in Persian language, we say she'er goftan, which means uttering poetry. Rumi did not sit and think and worry about rhyming or the meter of the poetry his heart was filled with the love of God and those poetry like volcano were just coming out of him when he would focus and get connected to the source. That's why we call uttering poetry. And he would go to that state and his oldest son, Sultan Balad, would write his poetry. Um, so this dance actually was created and developed while he was going round and round that pole. Um, so the main purpose of this dance is not to perform for an audience, not to uh, entertain an audience, this is not an entertainment, is not a performance, is an inner uh, prayers 
for the love of the one and it should be solely for the love of one not audience not um and should not be commercialized so uh unfortunately around the world uh many of the regular dancers they just uh, um, imitate this because there's so much to it and uh, it's very hard to do it correctly so they add all these things and um, totally uh, deviated the real purpose of this dance which is to to be utmost modest and like I say, it's not for entertainment, it's not for showing off, it's totally simplicity. When we have time in the future, I will explain what the hat or the tall hat represents, what the white gown, what the black uh, uh, cape, etc. cetera, all, all those things, uh, all those things have a, a meaning, specific meaning and symbolize certain things but we will come to that another time because uh, for this uh, this uh, evening we would not have enough time to to go through that okay so uh, let's do yet another uh, meditational song
Thank you so much. So now Yvette is going to treat us to another poem. Um, I specifically uh, chose to share with you some of these beautiful poetry because uh, we're singing uh, mostly in Turkish. And uh, if some of the audience uh, are not uh, familiar or fluent with the Turkish language, this way you will understand what, what are we talking about and what are these beautiful mystic Sufi mystics uh, teaching us, please. For the fire within us, there is no translator. For the secret in our hearts, there is no language. For our pain, there is no intimate sigh. For our sigh, no one to share the breath. No gem emerges from the sea. There is no sea at calm. Words give birth to no meaning. Words are void of affirmation. Language is a tunnel for thought. How can an ocean flow through a tunnel? Every atom of our soul is a universe. No mouth may contain the universe. Thank you so much. Don't put it away yet. Uh, I like to, I'm also keeping a track of the time. Technically, we said an hour and a half. Uh, so uh, we basically have only three minutes <laughs> to 8.30. However, I think we're going to go probably a little bit over time. Um, um, but I'd like to finish it with the nay. So Rumi has a very famous um, poet poem about the ney. Uh, this instrument, as you know, it's it's ancient. Uh, it goes back thousands of years ago. It's even mentioned in the Quran. Uh, again, because of the interest of time, I would not have uh, enough time to go uh, into the details. Just in in brief, it's an ancient. Uh, instrument and is not man-made it's it's made by nature or god or god of the nature uh this this uh, was as you know these are from the reed reed bed and it was broken and people found it this is a very very ancient history it's documented amongst different uh, groups goes back thousands of years ago and uh, so we as human beings uh, heard the sound and then little by little developed it. Again, it's a long story. At some other point, we will get into that. But let's hear what Rumi has to say about the reed flute. Listen to the reed that is complaining and narrating the story of separation. Ever since they have plucked me from the reed land, my laments have driven men and women to deep sorrow. I want someone with a heart pierced by abandonment so that I may tell him about the pain of my longing. He who falls aloof from his origin seeks an opportunity to find it again. I am a mournful in all sorts of company and I'm sought by the happy as well as by the unhappy. Everyone becomes friends with me according to his faculty of perception, and many do not seek my inner secret. My secret is not distant from my cries, but physical eyes and ears do not possess the light to see. In fact, the body from the spirit and the spirit from the body are not concealed, yet not too many are allowed to see. The sound of the nay is fire, it is not the ordinary wind, but he who does not have this fire 
may he become non-existent. It is of the divine higher love that has entered the name. It is the yearning for love that has brought the wine into action. The name is friends with anyone who has been deserted, and its musical divisions have torn off veils too. Who has seen an antidote as well as a poison left in it? Who has seen a sympathizing and longing love? Thank you so much. Uh, so I would uh, end this program with playing a, a piece of Ney or the reed flute. Um, just wanted to say a few words that uh, this instrument is very simple. It's just a, a plain um, cylinder with no mouthpiece. And it's very difficult to, to, uh, to play this instrument because you would not get the sound. It will take a long time just to get the sound. And of course, then you have to uh, master uh, how to, to play different melodies with the sound. Once you get the sound, then you can manipulate and learn different techniques and styles, etc. Again, I'll uh, say less because of the interest of time. Uh, however, um, it was said to have, if not the highest, one of the highest healing power. Uh, and that's why from the ancient times, thousands of years ago, this is way pre-Islamic instrument. Um, so people used to uh, treat patients with the sound of nay. It has a very strong healing power. And that is why the Sufis 1400 years ago, since they had, uh, um, as we said at the very beginning of the program, they have uh, this intuition and they could hear with not only with the ears of the head, but ears of the heart, they distinguished and felt that the, the vibration that emanates from this instrument, nay, is something very special. And therefore, uh, it's been used for therapeutic purposes as well. We are going to end with this and we're going to try to heal our hearts despite the COVID-19. I know uh, many of you might have uh, lost friends and loved ones. I myself have lost two uh, very dear friends um, and a relative. Um, but I think um, uh, God is giving us a message. Um, there is always a positive side to every difficult period and a negative, but the positive side is to realize, uh, perhaps better than before, that world and everything in it is mortal, is temporary, and uh, we should know the value of, of good friends, our families, and cherish our time and use it in a good way. Something, put it into something that adds to our uh, knowledge this is a time to reflect further and delve within ourselves uh, and reevaluate our values in life. Okay, so I will start with the nay. Let's see if I can bring this closer. Yes, I can.
That's it for tonight. We'd like to wish you a very happy, healthy, and prosper uh, days to come. One more time, on behalf of my friends Gail on vocals and frame drum, and Yvette on vocals and frame drum, I'd like to thank you and thank the organizers to bring us together and unite our hearts. 